Amid rising tensions between North Korea, U.S. and South Korea, its leader Kim Jong-un has uh, once again provoked the West, issuing a stark warning that Pyongyang is ready to mobilize its nuclear war deterrent and counter any military clash with the United States. The statement by Kim Jong-un came during the speech at the 69th anniversary celebration of Korean War Armistice. He said, and I quote, our armed forces are thoroughly prepared to respond to any crisis, and our nation's nuclear war deterrence is also fully ready to mobilize its absolute strength faithfully, accurately, and promptly to its mission, unquote. He also said that the North Korea needs to achieve an urgent historical task of beefing up its self-defense. Kim Jong-un also hit out at neighboring leader Yoon suk yeol by name. He denounced South Korea's new conservative president, accusing him of threatening North Korea's security and the right to defend itself. He said that Seoul's quote-unquote toadyish treacherous acts was pushy, pushing the situation to the brink of war, and that warmongers and thugs in the UN administration were adamant on confrontational military activities. Singling out Seoul's weapons deployments and uh, drive to bring back U.S. nuclear strategic assets as well as the Allied military drills. This after South Korean president pledged to complete the so-called kill chain system, which calls for preemptive strikes against the North's missiles and possibly its leadership if an imminent attack is detected. The speech comes after Washington and Seoul warned that Pyongyang has completed preparations to conduct its first nuclear test since 2017. North Korea has, in the recent months, carried out various tests of hypersonic missiles and also claims to have tested missiles that can carry tactical nuclear weapons, spiking nuclear tensions with the West. For more on this, we have our correspondent Richard Kimber joining us from Hong Kong. Hello to you, Richard. Now, what does this latest warning by North Korea really mean? Well, analysts say this is clear provocation from the North Korean leader that he wants to be in the headlines again. It's this longest stint over the last few weeks of him not making any public appearances over the last two years. He's used this armistice anniversary of the end of the Korean War to come out with these incredibly strong threats against the South, uh, particularly, analysts say, because he himself may feel under threat by the advanced negotiations and collaboration that's taking place between Seoul and Washington to beef up the defense capability of South Korea. The South Korean leader has been specifically talking up his new counter-strike system that you mentioned in your introduction there, the kill chain system, which is designed to preemptively uh, stop any missile tests from the north and put an end to this cycle of constant missile testing without really any consequences that Pyongyang has been enjoying over recent years. The concern, though, from analysts is that as this uh, type of rhetoric escalates and the military capability to deal with those missile tests escalates, on the part of South Korea, that there is more risk of a potential large-scale escalation of military tension occurring because all it will take then is one act to provoke the other side to carry out something more serious than has been seen before. Mm. Richard, as you've, uh, as you've touched on, Kim Jong-un has come out in harsh criticism of the new South Korean president. Warning Seoul was pushing towards the brink of war. How do you think this could affect the North-South relations? Well, the analysts in this region are very much concerned that this is only deteriorating. They are hoping that there will be some opportunity, as there was during the Trump administration, for some kind of constructive dialogue, uh, either via Seoul, between the U.S. and Pyongyang, or perhaps that will come via Beijing, they say, as there will be more communication now taking place uh, between uh, President Xi Jinping in uh, Beijing and President Biden. There's a call, of course, uh, due to take place today between those two leaders. They think that this is unsustainable for Kim Jong-un to continue 
continue down this track. But they also see Kim Jong-un potentially as trying to take advantage of the increasing tension between the US and China with regards to Taiwan. Although this is a completely unrelated situation, it's another example of the US being tested as to just how willing it may be to engage in full-blown military activity in this part of the world. And to a certain extent, analysts see Kim Jong-un as playing off of that and trying to test the US's resolve to come back with uh, strong military action towards Pyongyang in the way that it's now becoming under pressure to do so with regards to what Beijing may do towards Taipei. Right. And Richard, he, he also mentioned that uh, North Korea needs to achieve an urgent historical task of beefing up its self-defense. Take us through that statement. Well, again, trying to portray the idea that North Korea is in a position to keep spending more money and keep developing its missile forces. This is something that analysts here are increasingly questioning, whether or North Korea really has the capability to keep doing this. It's well understood that the country has been through a difficult period of COVID-19. It's well understood that the types of uh, food supplies that it's relied on from China have been cut off over recent months because of North Korea's self-imposed isolation during the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's well understood that North Korea's economy has suffered as a result. So there are serious question marks about how much truth uh, can be believed with regards to North Korea's uh, military expansion strategies. But clearly, Kim Jong-un trying to portray strength at a time when potentially analysts say he feels more under threat than ever with increased alliances between the US and Seoul. And as I say, an increased interest in regional stability from the US when it comes to trying to manage Beijing's expectations of what China can do with Taiwan. Right, Richard, thank you very much for bringing us all the latest today. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.